In the previous lesson, we learned about the divisions commonly found in an American pipe organ and the names commonly used to name those divisions. We also learned how important it is to have more than one manual, having two, three or more manuals in a pipe organ so that the organist can assign different tones to each of the manuals and by playing on more than one manual, make contrasts between what they're playing with each hand. Now we're going to go into another phase of what would be called organ registration. We're going to be coupling one manual's sounds into another manual so that the sounds of both manuals can be played on one manual. This is the process called coupling. In a mechanical action organ like this one, just to review, we have a direct mechanical linkage between each of the keys on the manuals and each of the pedals. That's a linkage mechanically that connects these with the valves that open the wind waves that allows the pipe to speak. When we couple these divisions together with couplers, the same kind of thing is happening. It's mechanical linkage. So I can couple this manual to this manual on this instrument by pulling the coupler. So when I play up here, you're going to see a visual indication that it is coupled because these keys are going to move just in, in sync with what I play up here. Watch. Now, I can couple what's pulled on the top manual or bottom manual to the pedal so that when I play the pedal, that the notes will play up here in a corresponding way on either of these keyboards, I'm going to pull an eight foot stop. And I play the pedal now, there's no pedals pulled here, but when I couple it, I get what's pulled here, watch. The top manual here is called the Hauptwerk. The lower manual is called the Rückpositiv. We'll learn more about these in a later lesson. But for now, these are the couplers. They are unison pitch eight foot couplers. In an organ of electro-pneumatic design, that is, an organ that is not of a mechanical action design, coupling still occurs, but it's done through digital switching these days. When you push a key down and a manual's coupled down to it, you won't see any of the phantom key movement that you see often on a mechanical style organ. Coupling is one way in many respects that is, you can couple certain manuals to others, but you can't couple them back to the other manual. I can couple the swell to the grate, for example, but I can't couple the grate up to the swell. It's a one-way direction, so that the swell and the choir both couple to the grate, and the swell can couple to the choir. But any other coupling is usually not found in an American organ. Let me demonstrate this coupling procedure. I'm going to pull a, a trumpet stop on the swell, and I'm going to pull a principal stop on the grate. Here's the way the trumpet sounds on the swell. And here's the way the principal sounds on the grate. Now, by using the coupler, swell to grate, eight foot, which I'm putting on right now, you'll have both the trumpet and the principal on the grate. Watch it as I add it now. We have essentially coupled the swell to the grate. Now, we can get different octave transpositions of that trumpet stop coupling into the grate simply by using our choice of other couplers at different pitches. We have here a 16, 8, and 4-foot coupler. 
the four foot swell to grate will bring in the sound that you're playing on the swell but from an octave higher than you're playing it and the swell to grate 16 will bring in the sound from an octave below where you're playing it. Let's listen and see how this works. Here I am going to be coupling at eight foot pitch again. Now I'm going to couple at 16 foot pitch so you're going to hear this coupled in. And then I'm going to couple in an octave above, so you're going to hear this. And. Now we can combine one, two, or all three of these swell to great couplers. We can use the unison as well as the sub octave and the super octave. All together, I'm going to add them and you'll hear what it does. So now I have sound from all of the divisions. I have stops on all four divisions, and I've got the swell and the choir coupled into the grate at unison pitch. I can broaden this even more by adding perhaps a sub and a super octave coupler. Let's see what happens when we add the swell to grate four foot and the choir to grate 16 foot. it gets even broader. And so once we have all of this, it may not be exactly what you want for any type of piece you're playing, but it's a demonstration of how to get some sound from each of the divisions into one full organ registration. Now, when you're through with all of this, you need to uh, get rid of all these stuffs. Well, you're not gonna go around and push them in by hand. Oh no, we wanna make this simpler. So there's this little button on the side called the general cancel. You just hit that once and Everything cancels. Watch. Voila, it's done. We have other couplers, and they are on draw knobs. For example, in the swell division, we've got three couplers right up here, but they are intramanual couplers. That means they couple the division to itself at either a higher or a lower pitch level. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull a few stops here so you can hear the eight foot. And I'm going to play middle C. And there we are. If you pull this coupler, this is called, it's a shorthand, swell four. It really means swell to swell four. It's coupling the swell division to itself at an octave higher. When you pull this, you get the octave above the note that you're playing as well as the note that you're playing. That's easy to hear. And similarly, we have a swell 16 stop. That's shorthand for swell to swell 16. When you pull that, you play middle C and you pull it, you get an octave below. This can be handy because it allows you to play octaves, basically, in a place where you'd only play normally a scale. Pretty impressive, you see. Now we have a third coupler, which is kind of wild. It's called the swell unison off coupler. Now this is actually an uncoupler, because if you have any stops pulled at all on the swell division, for example, and you pull the swell unison off, what do you think that does? That takes everything that is playing and it negates it. It cancels it, so it won't play. So here we are. If I pull the swell unison off, I keep the note playing, but it disappears. And while I'm holding it still, I could pull the swell to swell four and get that sound back an octave higher than I'm playing. And I can get it back an octave lower than I'm playing by pulling the swell to swell 16. And now, if I play it again and I retire the swell unison off, I get the eight foot pitch back. This is found on most American organs of this design. We have the swell couplers here, the intramanual couplers. We have the choir. And on this organ, which is a little unusual, we have the same types of couplers also in the great division. These are great tools for helping you to clarify and to balance the sound between different divisions when you're registering a piece. So as you can see, if we have an instrument of so many stops, say 40 or so stops, and we have maybe 15 different couplers, there's a potential 
for literally millions of different combinations of tone. Now, this is really getting into what we call the art of registration. We're just beginning to look into it, but we're going to investigate that more in future lessons. So let's close this lesson with another assignment. Do you remember that fugue we had a few lessons back? Box C minor fugue from book one of the Well-Tempered Clavier. If you were to take that piece and try it now on different registrations, see what it does for you. Uh, you can play the entire piece on one keyboard, or if you want to get adventuresome, you could take the piece and divide it up and move from keyboard to keyboard, changing the sounds as you think would best fit the piece, depending on how you feel, on the mood, or even on the thematic or formal structure of the piece. It's a great exercise to explore the various sounds in any organ.